Good ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Waterstone Election 2020 podcast. I'm your host, editor of the Daily Blog, Martin Bradbury, and joining me live from his Waterstone compound in Albany, libertarian, political commentator and stuff columnist, Damien Grant. Less than nine weeks until the 2020 New Zealand election, and it's another seven days of bombshells, with one more National Party MP that no one had ever heard of resigning in disgrace, which has spawned questions over when new leader Judith Collins knew what. Alongside that, National announced an embarrassingly uncosted infrastructure plan that made Kanye West's presidential launch look credible. Jacinda groveled to our Chinese overlords at the China-New Zealand conference. And to top it off, Winston threatened to beat up David Seymour on Twitter. Damien Grant, Judith Collins' office. Can I confess something first? No, George. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, okay. Nothing, nothing illegal. No, you don't need to tell them. It's, it's, when, when they said it was some guy called, National Party guy called Falloon, yep. my first thing is, I thought he retired years ago. And, I, and there is, there was a previous Falloon, there but they're not, they're not related. No, I, I checked, it's a different Falloon. They're like the National Party in Falloons and, and Acton Seymour's. <sighs> anyway, one more Falloon. That's what, that's what people are turning out for, political insight like that. Damien Grant, Judith Collins' office was made aware on Friday morning regarding the allegations that National Party MP Andrew Falloon had sent unsolicited sex test messages to a university student. I put it to you, sir to you that Judith waited until Monday to announce it so that it wouldn't overshadow her infrastructure launch and stain her first round of political media shows in the weekend and as such her sudden execution of him in public is disingenuous at best and downright manipulative at worst is this what leadership looks like in the national party this is the problem partisanship has got into your brain and it is it has stopped you from thinking. Uh-huh. You hear an allegation like this. The first thing you do is get up on the media and say, Oh my God, I've heard an allegation that what? No. The first thing you do, you hear the allegation and he says, Is this allegation true? Because if the allegation is you, not you want to move it on pretty quick, eh? No, but it might not be true. Sure, sure. It's just an allegation. Yep. And it was on Friday. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, look, I understand. She waits two days. But I understand that, that, that unlike the rest of us, you don't have a day job. That's but right. For those of us who yeah, work, yeah, you yeah. know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. And those other two so, days. So then you got Saturday and Sunday. Those are the, I realise the daily blog, ladies and gentlemen, never sleeps. It doesn't. It does, that's right. It's always going. But, um, uh, but Saturday and Sunday, so June Judith took her time, and look, and and that is fair. I mean, you've just got to uh, work out. I mean, come on, listen. I'm not entirely, I'm not entirely too sure that the Labour Party can take the high moral ground because they take, how they take, they take years sometimes to uh, not release information. Right, 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 right. So so Judith Mm -hmm. threw this guy. Two days. Over, overboard in like a, a yeah, two or th- right. no, one working day. So, okay, Excuse me, except, Monday. Sh- one working day and he but, was in the drink. But wouldn't wouldn't you it's have thought would not. wouldn't you have thought as the leader of a party yes. that an allegation this serious after everything else that has gone on in the National Party yes. arrives on your desk, she says she waited those two days because she wanted to look him in the eyes. What's wrong? Wouldn't have been smarter. On Saturday morning to have looked him in there. Isn't this one of those things of, hey, sweetheart, my house, you, I need to talk to you now, right? There would have been an immediate, if this is an issue of, of this okay. problem, she All should right. have turned up on Saturday, found out whether or not the story was true, because clearly she found out afterwards it wasn't, because he had made up all sorts of different stories by then, and then been able to move on it quicker by waiting. No, no she did, she did, I mean, because um, we are not Lichtenstein. You may you may not be aware of this, yes. But this this is other whole great. I, some people call it the mainland, and Judith is in Auckland. So Judith does not have enough control over her own MPs that she can't demand no. an errant one come to see her now. We don't know um, exactly what happened, but I think we we can take Judith at face value. There was an allegation. It was a serious mm-hmm. allegation. We already know that the original allegation was false. Because apparently she was a schoolgirl and she yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's right. That's so, right. So, so I think it was inti- before Judith destroy somebody's career, you want to be sure. Because the nightmare scenario yep. is, well, what if he was telling the truth? 
you want to be ab- before you stick the knife in. Of you want to be certain. of course. And and it was but one. That, it was one working day. One working which day, which allowed oh, her to not oh. have to actually face those questions in her first weekend of media rounds as the leader of the. Which is quite for, quite fortuitous. No, no, it, wasn't no. It? Um, waiting, waiting one working day to resolve this issue. You are grasping at straws. Move on. So this is this is what leadership looks like. In the National Party, compared com, compared to, I mean, how long was David Clark allowed to to, to twist in the wind? Come on, and you got the Labour camp issue. I think and, this no, is a no, bit no, no, no hold on. No, you <laughs> have it. There was there was an, there was there was another allegation. Yeah, run, run in the spin-off, right? Yes. Oh, were, no, 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 absolutely, that, absolutely, right? absolutely. And the, and the Labour Party, quite yep. rightly, you know, took their time. Yep. To run through the process. Yep. Right, and then and then the prime minister made a complete. But wouldn't you wouldn't, of it. wouldn't you move on this sort of thing immediately? No, because um, you well in a sense I think she did one working day. She heard the allegation on the Friday and he and he was gone. And by she the meets them on Monday. One working day. Okay. 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 All right. So stop okay. stop looking for conspiracies. I mean I don't know why you're trying to milk this. I mean the the you d- you don't even need to dig any further. Here we have a national party MP. Engaging in Anthony Weiner type skullduggery. Why do you need to go trolling because, any further? Because, because, Take because, the win. because, Take the win. because, didn't we just see this last week with Todd Muller? When he was the leader, he got told something, then didn't tell people what he knew. Oh, and then it all implodes, and then the new leader comes along. She's told something, doesn't act on it. It's almost. I but mean, she just, did act. She did act on it. Just, take, just, just take the win. We have a national party, another national party MP involved in questionable behaviour. So that's wind, 19 MPs on. gone you now. See, is that good or bad? The, well, this is, this is part of the National Party refresh. <laughs> you know, the, the, the intergenerational people. <laughs> and it is. I mean, this is, this is a generational yeah, change. You're getting is. rid of the young people and putting in some oldies. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like a reverse COVID virus, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, moving on, let's talk about that uncosted infrastructure launched by National. It's $31 billion, but they haven't costed the largest projects. And those projects won't start for 10 years. At this stage of the election, is it just pick crazy numbers out of your bum and pretend it's policy? Um, well, yes, that's what. You know, $140 billion. I mean, that was pulled out of somebody's right, rear end, right, wasn't right, it? So, right. I mean, I think, well, this is the problem. All fiscal discipline it's has just gone. gone. On just both sides, the, the political consensus that has ruled this country since right. 1984 yep. has been utterly smashed. And, I mean, all joking aside, that's a real problem. Both sides of the aisle now just, just do not care. I, I mean, government's talking about $140 billion. Um, Judith isn't talking about reducing that 140. As far as I can tell, she's put 31 billion on top of it. Where do we get to, though, in terms of actual real infrastructure upgrades, that the kind that we need in this country? I mean, these aren't—they're talking about they wouldn't start these for a decade. That—that that seems to be incredibly underwhelming as a vision, isn't it? No, no, we've got the walkway over there. Are they going to ban? Are they banning that? Oh, that's right, Judith. Is yeah, yeah, that's right. They dump that. that. Yeah, so. Yep. So if National could dream a dream, it would be a four-lane motorway, would it? D- doesn't that say Mark, something about the lack of imagination in New Zealand politics? Do you want to think about this for a second? When you're sitting in your car and you, th- you think of the car, isn't it beautiful? All of this wondrous technology right, that the free market has delivered you and you are sitting on the road that's not going anywhere, that's provided by the state. I mean, that's, that's why just, I get on public transport. That's why I use public transport. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. You're still you're still stuck on on the roads. The idea that the government is going to be able to build, do anything to to cure Auckland's good luck, good luck is nonsense. Good luck is here, and it's here to stay. We okay. just have to embrace it, and people need to listen to podcasts like this to relieve the crushing boredom of being on Auckland roads. Are you? Are you? We're here for you. Are you? Are you happy to see a second bridge, Harbour Bridge? So long as they don't have the pay for it, or if it's a user pay system, well, then I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm all uh, great for it. But if it's coming out of my taxes and my kids' taxes and his kids' taxes, then no. Moving on. A, Judith is talking about a tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's she talking can about. bury all of the noffies and MPs she has to throw under the. That's good. She's got a bridge. She can throw them un- un- off the bridge. Moving on. Let's talk about Jacinda groveling to our Chinese economic overlords this week at the China New Zealand conference. At what point. Do we start to question our economic dependency on a mass surveillance authoritarian regime who are crushing Hong Kong, re-educating the Uyghurs and stealing territory in the South China Sea? Isn't there a point to go, 
maybe not so much. Well, it is it is real politics. I mean, we we are this is Finlandization. That is that is a reality. Yeah. We are we are economically dependent on China and if utterly, we, utterly and if we, dependent. And if we want to take a stand, it's going to cost right. dearly. And, and they've made it very clear to us that they will they will punish, won't they? So um, if if you ask the um, average New Zealander, are they prepared to accept a ten to fifteen percent drop in the standard right. of living in order for us to protest the Uyghurs? I think the answer is going to be no. So I don't think it's necessarily fair to blame our politicians for their lack of courage. I think that's a New Zealand right thing. Is David Longy turning in his grave at the pathetic loss of our independent state foreign policy? Um, I don't know why. I don't see how David Longy did anything to advance our uh, nuclear free. Oh, we were we were cowering under the uh, the American exactly. nuclear umbrella. Wasn't we it were wonderful. We what were, a symbolic we stance. We were spineless freeloaders. Are we spineless freeloaders here now? Um, no, we're not spineless freeloaders. We are catamites. We are bending over and taking it on behalf of our Chinese overlord, and we are happy to receive it. I mean, we get cheap phones. What more could we want? They buy our butter, we buy their phones, and we take it. But isn't okay? So John Key put and they all, get our, all of that. They all get all of our data. John, yeah, well, so, so does the NSA, I suppose. Yeah, uh, right. John Key put all our keys, uh, our cows, in one Beijing paddock. Are we paying the price for that now, strategically? No, because the. Because we're dependent on them, right? But that was always going to happen. China has become an economic, um, an incredible economic power. Yep. Uh, and I don't think we're, we're not doing anything by cutting off our nose to spite our face by, by withdrawing economically from China. The Chinese are not going to care. And I, but I think you also, you, 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 we need to think like the Chinese. The Chinese do not think in, in five and ten year increments. They, t they think in hundred year increments. And I think if you're looking at the China of today, we should not assume that the China of today will be the China in a hundred years' time. Certainly there will be less Uyghurs. With Trump's America imploding and China needing to project power, who will we be forced to side with? And, and, and when do you think... China. That, that's already been decided. So, okay, so so let's let's say there we, is... We, we have a free trade agreement with China. Um, uh, United States has pulled out of the TPP. And that was not our choice, remember? The United States pulled out of the TPP. Yep. Right? So we, we have a free trade agreement with China. For better or worse, we are... They are our friends, whether we are their friends. We are... We are we're an upscale Fiji. <clears throat> Lovely, charming, like it, want it, need it. But if we're looking at Trump going to the polls in November, if there is some type of military clash between the US Navy and the Chinese Navy in the South China Sea, where are we going to be forced to side? I think we, in that case, we will be very grateful for Mr Longley that we are not part of ANSYS. You, would, we not, would we not send military? to a, a, a help and engage with the Australians and the Americans who would immediately ask for us to support? I think if it came to, if it came to that, we would side with our traditional allies. So where's that going to leave us with China? Because they're going to want to start punishing at that point, right? Um, we might need to start eating our own cows because nobody else is going to. Moving on, Winston's tweet threatening to beat up David Seymour is surely evidence that the bad boys of Brexit, Banks and Wigmore, are now officially running his campaign, aren't you they? Are, you are bang on this, right? Because um, I, uh, when I saw that, and I saw your comment that this is the Brexit boys, and I thought, yep, yeah, bombers, bombers bang on. You are bang on. That's exactly it. Because if you look at that tweet, and I, and I went back and I had a look at some of other tweets, that is not his style. Right? That is not Winston. Right? These are, these are the Brexit boys. And it was brilliant. And you almost wonder whether... Um, uh, uh, Seymour and Peters jacked this up together because it, <laughs> it was great for both of them. You know, all of a sudden we're talking about David Seymour and Winston Peters. Right? It was great. Uh, because, of course, these guys were the ones who used Comic Sans in their Brexit they stuff. And, and they did it on purpose to troll yes. the left. And it worked for them, right? They loved it. Uh, uh, with um, Banks and Wigmore, their success in, in, in Brexit was because they had uh, access to Cambridge Analytic data to do the micro-targeting of the white, angry male voters that, that, that came out in support of the Brexit. They don't People have... Like us. Well, yeah, 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 that, exactly. But they don't have that Cambridge Analytica data for New Zealand. So is this kind how of you, basic bargain... How do we know? I mean... Oh, well, we, well, because, well, because Cambridge Analytica was wound up and they can't... No, but to... I mean, look, I mean, um, uh, my firm, we, 
we use Facebook to target the marketing. Yep. We, can, we can get some really specific targeted yes. marketing out of Facebook. Now, it's probably not at the at the granular level that uh, Cambridge Analytica. That Cambridge Analytica. But you're, you're talking you're, you're talking big political segments, right? Right. And the money involved is not that huge. We're no, about no, 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 no. That's right. That's right. So I don't. Um, but I think what what is relevant. I don't think they need the micro targeting. I just think they need really clever social media engagements, and that's all it requires. So this is the kind of trolling we can expect from 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 Winston. Look, it's 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 the it's the dancing Cossacks upgraded to a modern era. What are the chances Winston under this new Here Winston? will challenge Clark Gayford to a fishing competition on Twitter. Chances? Zero. What are the chances Winston will call Jerry Brownlee fatty fatty boomsticks? Or oh, about 20%. What are the That's chances Winston will what, what are the chances Winston will tell Judith Collins she's got a face like a smack bum? Percentage. <laughs> percentage. Give me a percentage. Give me a percentage. They'll think it. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> They'll do it now. We can send them the invoice, right? Our uh, final thing, shouldn't the rights be nervous? that none of the usual suspects are jumping for joy in the background over the latest polling that they would have received post Judith Collins' leadership win. It's all silent on the Western Front. Well, no, I think there's, there's two things to consider here. Um, uh, after the Todd Minor implosion, yes. the National Party vote was going to go down. It does not matter who they uh, right. elected. It was just this, you know, the third third leader in, in two months, it's, it's just a disaster. So, and even if Judith is, uh, will prove to be popular, I think the national brand has taken such a shellacking and, and they haven't really been able to get there because uh, um, we've now got, you know, we're still dealing with the Hamish Walker and, and now we've got the Andrew Falloon disaster. Yep. So I think you, there's a potentially a bit of a disconnect between Judith's brand because I think Judith is she's a very effective political operator, much more so than oh no question than, than Mullet. She 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 knows what she believes. It's, yeah. it's, it's, no, she doesn't have any belief. We've discussed that previously. Um, she is um, um, a Muldoonist, um, yep. but the, so I guess she does believe in that. But you've got you've got a disconnect between people's perception of Judith Collins and people's perception of the National Party. And what Judith has got to do is she's got to convince the public that although they, the if you're going to vote National, you've got to do two things. One, you've got to have confidence in Judith Collins. And two, you've got to believe that she's leading something that's not an absolute train wreck. And that's what it's looking like right now. Do you think that maybe, maybe Judith's attack style of politics, and this was Nikki Hager's argument this week on the spin-off, two of your favourite things, um, his argument was that, that was there's, actually, there's actually there's, there's, there's been a change in the, in the psychology yeah. of the electorate. You um, don't believe that? Nikki Hager, um, whose entire career has been built on writing books on stolen um, uh, emails. And he's done such a great job. Oh, that's a loathsome individual. Um, although he was right. I had to under what I call him saying he was right on the war thing, which hurt me deeply. Good, good. I met him. He, good. Is, a, he, is, he is a lovely man. He, he is. wrong on everything. But Fair no, enough. the idea that attack politics is dead is wishful thinking. Uh, and you, don't, you don't think that you don't think the solidarity that's been created by lockdown has changed the electorate? No, and you you only have to look at the at the joy and the engagement that people got from Winston Peters threatening to punch David Seymour, right? I mean, we we we're talking about it, we're laughing about it. It's funny, yes. Right? And this is and this because is, and because this is but what that's, we that want. is because that is funny though. Winston telling. David Seymour, <laughs> then he'd punch him. Like this old super annuant and sort of coming but out going, I am the master. I mean, for God's sake, it's ridiculous. It wasn't just that thing, Martin. Um, he had this crack about, I spent my career in politics supporting the old people. You want to euthanize them. It was a great line. It doesn't <laughs> matter. But that that's different. That's, 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 sure, sure, sure. But that is different than, no, than what Judith Collins does, isn't it? There's, um, a, there's a venom quality here. We that one, we one, one's we an itchy bite, one's actually toxic. At the moment, the only person who's felt um, Judith's venom is Mr. Falloon. We haven't really seen... Then maybe Todd Muller. And, uh, no, I think Todd Muller bit himself. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't seen that part of Judith. And, yep. and, and I know that it's your belief that we are going to see that, that, that we are going to see the honey. I think under return. pressure... She's going to be what she is. Um, but if she can, um, I don't know that that sort of politics will necessarily play as badly as you believe it will. But I also think I'm not convinced we're going to see it from Judith this time around. Really? No, I think she's she she kind of likes a new responsible, um, grown up Judith. And you look at the way I know you, you you're challenging her, but the way she dealt with the Andrew Falloon one, and she's coming out there and she said, 
clearly that was a lie, I'm talking about the fact that he left his phone out there. Um, so she's on the right side of that issue. She's, she's, she's taking a fairly, stand, a fairly strong principle stand. Um, I think you don't think this is a, a frog scorpion movement? I think if Judith Collins Start sting if, in the face. If Judith Collins can maintain the calm professional right. approach, yes. she could get national up to thirty two percent. Our next podcast is Tuesday, fourth of August, when we'll be going weekly through until the end of the election campaign and we'll start having phone in guests as well. That's it for the show. See you next week.